Hold on. Thank you. It's always good to practice. Let me make sure the other one's on. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's on. It's on. We're good. Thanks. All right. So we are uh, uh, in the evening at sunset tonight begins Yom Kippur, which is the conclusion of the 10 days of awe. And I, I just want to focus on that. There's so much. Um, I was listening to a prophetic teaching about the year 5384. I'm not going to jump into a lot of detail, uh, but this is a year for us to declare the Lord and to take his message global. That's part of that four in 5384. And I was just kind of uh, fascinated by that. So let's dig in. We'll go to Leviticus chapter 16 after we have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for the grace that you show us every day. Thank you for peace that passes all understanding. Thank you for joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Thank you that we can count on you to be true to your word 100% of the time. Lord, I, I pray today that you'd give us ears to hear and eyes to see through the filters of your word and your spirit the way things really are and what you would have us to engage in this hour because it's a difficult time around the world. There are already people in, in persecution, which we've talked about so long, it's almost become mundane repeating it, but there are people being persecuted for their faith around the world. There are children and widows and orphans that are starving. There are, there are so many things, Father, we just lift this all up to you and we thank you, Father, that you are using us. If we just make ourselves available, you will use us in this moment to do what you have in mind, to demonstrate your love and your kindness, and to carry the witness of Christ to our neighbors and around the world. And Lord, we ask for the anointing to hear and see your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. So I would put in here something um, that... Uh, I think it was on the on the prayer list on the back. I hadn't thought about this for a long time, uh, uh, but the, there's a, this guy was talking and 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 he was talking about prophecy, uh, uh, and and I'm going to read Leviticus here in just a minute. Uh, and he was saying uh, every year he kind of the Jewish year he kind of takes a look to see what that number is on the periodic table of elements. And I'm going, that's, that's crazy, but okay. So, so he, he said that num, uh, element number 84 on the periodic table is polonium. Polonium only happens as a result of nuclear explosions. And, he, and, and, so, he's, and so it made me think of, and some of you will remember the duck and cover dr dr drills that we did in school. We had to practice for the, the Russians in, in, uh, bombing us. Remember, and that wasn't just me, right? I mean, everybody did that, okay? So it made me think about that. And I didn't even know how to put that in. I didn't know how to frame that as a probably fifth, sixth grader, uh, fourth grader, maybe even second grader. I, I, I can't remember how I framed nuclear disaster, um, except that they showed us pictures. They had movies, remember they showed movies? of what happened, you know, this is what happens. <laughs> Today we're going to scare the crap out of a bunch of elementary school children and show them what happens when a nuclear bomb is dropped. I'm thinking, what are, what were they thinking? But anyway, uh, I, don't, I don't even know how to frame that, but somehow the desk was going to protect us. <laughs> Imagine that. All right, let's get into the word. It is, this is from the Complete Jewish Bible. It is to be a permanent regulation for you that on the 10th day of the seventh month, you are to deny yourselves and not do any kind of work, both the citizen and the foreigner living with you. For on this day, atonement will be made for you to purify you. You will be made clean before Adonai from all your sins. It is a Shabbat of complete rest for you and you are to deny yourselves. And it mentions that again. Um, and I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. On the 10th day of the appointed month, in early autumn, you must deny yourselves 
neither native born Israelites nor foreigners living among you may do any kind of work. This is a permanent law for you. On that day, offerings for purification will be made for you, and you'll be purified in the Lord's presence from all your sins. It will be a Sabbath day of complete rest, and you must deny yourselves. This is a permanent law for you. Do you notice how much it says deny yourself? All right, and, 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 and I want to tell you the filter for that in, in, in uh, rabbinical teaching is fasting, okay? And I was thinking, okay, that's cool, Lord. So I had my, I had my, my protein smoothie a little bit before sunrise. I'm going to go ahead and, and I'll, I'll, I'll have one after sunset tonight and that'll be good. He said, wait, you're missing the point. This isn't about not eating food. It's about denying yourself. And, and this is so important because it's going to come up a couple more times in scriptures today. But there, there are times if we will, if we fail to deny ourselves, we will miss the purpose and destiny that God has for our lives. I, I, I have had to make some of those choices, and I'm sure all of us have had to make some of those choices. But that's the difference between the schools of, of uh, the seminaries that every believer goes to, and I'm going to talk about that here in just a few minutes. So Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. Yom is day, Kippurim is atonement. And here's the backing. God is holy, man must be pure to remain in communion with him. Sin and defilement damage the relationship between creature and creator. And the process of atonement through repentance and reparation, the reparation being the death of Christ on the cross, all right, restores this relationship reconciling us to God. Jesus is our atonement. So when we're looking at this day of atonement and every other day of the 365.25 days we have in every year, Jesus is our atonement. And we need to rest on and rely on him and him alone. It's faith in Christ. It's what Christ has completed for us, not what we do in our day-to-day -day lives, but there is a responsibility that we have. And we're going to get into that a little bit more on the next slide. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, and I'm going to stop, I'm going to tell you the most precious gift that God has given every one of us, and it's the, 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 the ability to choose. God gave us the gift of free will. We get to choose, okay? That's, that's what delineates. If you take a look at, at, at the heroes that are mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, the heroes of the faith, they were choosing. And, and I, I want to tell you, uh, uh, it, it, I was reading the other day, um, Jacob, he loved, and Esau, he hated. And I'm reading about how God hated Esau. He gave him everything. He gave him food. He had a place to live. He had stuff. He had wives. He had children. I'm going, but, but Jacob gets his knuckles wrapped about every fourth time when, when the nun's walking by. Whack! You remember those? Okay. That was, the, that was the official correction right there, man. You knew you had crossed the line with Sister Miriam. That was it. All right, so we, we, we need to understand we get to choose. So on the way to this purpose and destiny in our lives, we get to choose. We get to choose the programming of the world, which always takes me back into the matrix, okay? We get to choose the programming of the world, or, or we get to listen to what's coming out of Zion. We get to listen to the truth and we, and we get to walk according to the way and the truth and the life. And a lot of times people will hear, you're never going to amount to nothing. And then the Lord goes, but, but. Okay, so I want us to look here. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, he didn't say, if any of you wants to repent and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead and say those magic words. He didn't say that. He said, if any of you wants to be my disciple, my follower, all right, so, so there's an implication here. 
That means somebody's leading and somebody's following, which should be us, and that means me. If you're listening, that means you, but it's me, okay? All right, we need to understand God's talking to us, and he's telling us, follow him. It is not a static relationship. It's a dynamic relationship. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. What does it say in King James? You must deny yourself. That's exactly what we're talking about here. As we, as we walk into this day of atonement, if we're going to walk in the fullness of the salvation, the fullness of the calling, the fullness of the anointing that God has for us so that we can have maximum impact in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. We have to deny ourselves. Did you notice that that's how we begin our relationship with him? We repent. All that stuff we thought was right and everything that we thought was the way it was supposed to be done, that wasn't right after all. Okay, Lord, so how does it really work? You must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. We talked about this, and, uh, and the cross meaning the way that Jesus was going to be able to impact the whole world for the Father was he had to carry that cross to Calvary. And we talked about a couple of weeks ago how that cross was really that purpose and destiny of Christ, which, the, which Satan just kind of went along with because he thought, man, he's playing right into my hands. I'm going to kill that sucker. Jesus had the Trojan horse of all Trojan horses on his shoulder, and he carried it to Calvary for us. But you know what? The whole world, too. He carried it for the whole world. How are they going to know about him if somebody doesn't tell him? Do you know some of the places that Brother Vincent is walking into in Kenya have never, ever even heard about the Bible or Jesus? Sister Thandra, same situation. We get to be a part of that. But, but I want to tell you, there's a responsibility. Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. We got the uttermost parts of the earth. We're tagging that pretty good by the grace of God. But what are we doing in our Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria? Okay. But if you, if you give up your life, if you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it, which means your vision, your purpose, the way you see your life playing out, the programming that's been dumped on you, the, the, the almost cyclical graduate high school, go to a trade union, go to college, do that for a few years, then take your job, retire after 20 years, wait a few years, have a good time, go to the nursing home, die. And, and I, I, it, used to, it, it used to like drive me crazy. I was a lab technician at, at uh, Maslin Community Hospital, and they would tell me to go to the nursing home and draw blood. The nursing home is right next to the funeral home. I'm talking, what are you guys? Come on, those people over, those people next door are probably really cheered every day. They see those hearses driving away from the nursing home there. And, and we have to be careful because that stuff will get imprinted on us. And we'll, and we'll follow the programming instead of following the Lord. That following the programming in the Bible is known as lean on, leaning on your own understanding. We need, we, need to, we need to break ourselves out of that mold so that we're listening to him because he has us. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and he'll get us where he intends for us to go. And where do you think, what do you think he wants for us? We are children of the Most High God. What does he want for you? Oh, the very best, not the mediocre, not, not, not the candy at the bottom of the bowl that nobody else wanted. Okay, and, and, when, and when we give, you know, uh, it used to, we had, uh, when I was called to pastor this church uh, in, uh, in, in Friendswood, Texas, there was a mound 
in the back of the church that was about halfway up that pole there that stretched out about this far to both sides of donations that were just basically junk that people dropped off at the church because they couldn't think of anything else to do with it. And, and that's, that tends to be where, where a lot of people reside is the leftovers. The, uh, what was it? Um, one of the prophets was talking about the cows of Bashan. He was talking about the, 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 poor, the rich who are looking down on the poor. You know, and, and, and we need to understand God has a plan for us, and it's for us to be his disciple. Let me read the scripture all the way again, Matthew 16, 24 through 26. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your own soul? Now, I was digging through this a little bit. Purpose of a disciple is to introduce salvation by faith in Christ and to make disciples, all of whom will attend seminaries. The seminary will be either the seminary of form, I showed up most of the time, especially on Christmas and Easter, versus substance, as in Matthew 16, 24 through 26, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. Okay, that's, that's, that's where we're called. All right, we can, we, can do, we can do the bare minimum, but I want to tell you that there's, there's a scary thing attached to that. We'll, go on, we'll, we'll touch on that in a couple of minutes. Calling, purpose, and destiny. There are two plans. The enemy has a plan. God has a plan. Okay? Um, so, like, let's just say, for, an ins for instance, this is an example. You have something, you have a tumor in your head. And you get two choices. The most revered neurosurgeon in the world or the retired iron worker down the street. <laughs> Come on. I mean, listen, I want to tell you, God, God has a plan for us. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants the enemy, if he can't, take your soul. He wants to minimize the impact of good that God channels to and through you. He wants to minimize your impact. He wants to minimize your testimony. He wants to turn your volume down. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Now, I, I got to tell you, sometimes God will take vision and put it on a person and 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 that that vision is so huge that only God can make something like that happen and and I feel like that I stepped out when I stepped out on the beach and I asked the Lord for those things twenty three almost twenty three years ago exactly um, i I believed I had that flash. Absolute, convinced, believe for sure God answered that prayer in that moment. But then he took me through a whole bunch of stuff to get me to where I am today. Because what I wanted to do, I didn't want all that. I didn't want a bunch of money so I could get rich and go retire somewhere. I wanted a bunch of money to put an end to homelessness in the United States in the best way possible by getting people to Jesus and showing them that work is a cool thing. And that God has good stuff inside of them. And, and, and that's what worked at the mission. And that was, that was what I saw. And then and the Lord kind of expanded on that as I went. But he needed to take me down a pathway to get me ready for that. So part of not leaning on our own understanding is letting God tell us when it's time to, to attack. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that here in just a second. You, uh, Jerry, when you, when, you served, when you served in Vietnam, were you drafted, or did they did they uh, did you just go volunteer when you served? Did they draft you? They drafted you. <laughs> okay. Did they just tell you, look, Jerry? Now that you're in the army, I want you to go out and pick up a big stick and a couple rocks because we're getting ready to go fight the Vietnamese. They actually gave you some good ordnance and stuff, right? Okay. 
we, un- we need to understand if God has a plan for us, he's going to equip us to get where he wants us to go. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the Spirit of God. So don't throw away that courage of yours, which carries with it such a great reward, for you need to hold out so that by having done what God wills, you may receive what he has promised. I'm, I'm going to tell you what, I, what I'm, I believe is about to happen, is what I asked him for 23 years ago is about to unfold. Now, I've told you stuff about, about what's going on in the business. Aretha knows this already. But a company came up to, to, to me, contacted me two weeks ago, and they said, uh, we would like to see your technology installed in a lot of places. And so we're, we're dedicating a $100 million fund to that. And, and, and I went, hello? <laughs> is, this one of those, is this one of those prank calls? Uh, I mean, seriously, as I'm going down the road, and, and I, I've said this a lot of times, this, this business thing, I literally just show up in the morning sometimes, most of the time, and just say, Lord, what is it you want me to do? And then, and then I try to listen. And I start my day every, every day. I'm, I'm in the Word. I'm in prayer. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing what are the perspectives that God might have on the day so that I'm ready to go out and face it. You know why? Because <clears throat> God didn't tell us to go out and pick up a couple rocks and a big stick. It says right here, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to make it obedient to Christ. We have been given God's best tools to accomplish what it is he wants us to do. And, And the thing he wants us to do all the way through we read the Ten Commandments. We, we, we read the summation of the most important commandment in the Word. We, we've read all of that. We understand we have, we basically know what the, the guidelines are. If you're playing, if you're playing any sport, if you want to win fairly, there are certain rules, there are dimensions to the field, there are certain things that delineate a successful score, there are things that's, that are foul and against the rules. And you have to apply those things. So what God has done is he said, okay, now, I have a purpose and plan for you. We, we've, we've read this before. Did I, put it in, did I put it in today or not? Yeah, I did. Okay. He has a plan for us. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And the world, and sometimes even the religious world, We'll put a big comma or but after that. Well, see, what I'm doing is I'm not following a religion. I, I'm following the Lord Jesus Christ as he's laid out in his word. And, and, and if I find myself in error, I, I repent and I move to the next place that he has for me. Because what I want to do is accomplish his purpose here. And if I'm seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness, what does he say about all the other stuff? It'll be added to us. God empowers us to be victorious, to reach the destiny and purpose that he has for us so that we can be the most effective part of the net that we can possibly be. Okay. For if you sinful people, this is Matthew chapter 7, Verses 11 through 29. For if you sinful people, he's talking about everybody. For if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law of the prophets. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad. And its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few find it. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is the way they act. 
Can you pick grapes from thorn br brushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit. A bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit. A bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you identify a tree it's by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Not everyone who calls out to me, listen to this, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, perform many miracles in your name, but I will reply, I never knew you, get away from me. You who break God's laws, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the wind beats against the house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But if anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand, when the rain and the floods come and the wind beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowd was amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike their teachers of the religious law. Why? Because the teachers of the religious law went to the seminary of form. Form, they tithe of mint and anise, cumin. They were, they were doing it just like it says in the book. They were staying in the bounds. But they had neglected the weightier areas of the law. They were all about form. What were they supposed to be doing? Executing justice and mercy on behalf of the king. That was their role, not just carrying out ceremonies that are important. And I'm not diminishing the importance of the ceremonies. The, the times and the seasons and God's word are so clear, so really clear and so pertinent and so meaningful, especially and even today, which is why I, I, was, I, I brought up the whole thing about nuclear war. We, I, I, there are crazy people out there, and the devil likes to work with crazy people. So in the name of Jesus, we come against that spirit of nuclear war. We come against that spirit of, of, of anarchy and chaos that would try to inflict that on this world. And, and we refuse it and we, and we call them to be, to be put in the can and canned far away so that they can't touch anything or anybody in Jesus' name. And, and, and that children would not have to be able to be taught again to be in great fear because governments are struggling against each other that they might be able to know, Lord God, that you are over all in Jesus' name. We need to understand there are a whole lot of people who think because they said a few magic words in a church service one day, they think they're in heaven. I got to say, some of them are going to be surprised because they've chosen to continue to do what they're doing. I was talking to Brother Vincent yesterday, and uh, I've got the recording. I'll, I'll download it and send it to you guys. But, but he, says, he says, Pastor, we have, we have these people that we go out and, we, and, and, they, and, they, and they, they make a decision to come to Christ, and then we come back a while, around and we find that they're in their old ways again. And, and, and I said, yeah, I run into that here, except it's more of a Passive thing, people stop in, drop in, be here for a while, disappear, because they're doing their own thing. And then there are people who are focused and, and realize that Jesus is their only hope. And, and they're looking for something, some food, some spiritual food, some spiritual drink that will allow them to walk in the direction that he's called them to walk. Difficult, even though it may be. But I want to say that God doesn't take us through difficult things for no reason. I know there are some specific things he's done in my life, took me through some very dark difficulties so that I was absolutely positively clear that I'm in relationship with him and not with other stuff, or that I had a way that I could have one foot in and one foot out. It doesn't work that way. 
That's what Jesus was telling his disciples. If you want to follow me, you're going to have to deny yourself, pick up your cross, pick up your purpose, your destiny, that's going to get Jesus to as many people as possible in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. We're all called to that, every one of us, not just somebody who's up here in a pulpit on Sundays or some other pulpit. Okay. Listen, okay, going to class here. If you believe the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a disciple. Are you a disciple of form? Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord. Or are you a disciple of substance? His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were so amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. As soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. That's substance. That's not, that's not just showing up. That's substance. And that's what he's called each of us to. To one degree or another, everyone is, God loves us uniquely and the callings on our life are unique. Jesus speaking here in John chapter 15, we start about the fifth verse. Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in them, those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so you'll be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. This is the salvation that we receive from God. When, when, we, when we have that moment of metanoia and repentance, we've turned our heart and our mind away from our other patterns of logic and our, our former knowledge, and we've decided that, that that's trash. What we thought, what we believed, what we did, the sins we committed, all of that is gone because we've repented and trusted Christ as our Savior. When we do that, we've appropriated the blood that he shed on Calvary to ourselves, and we've opened a door to that Jeremiah 29, 11 thing. And we've opened a door to what we just read. <laughs> it just said, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. Listen, there, there, are, there are people who will try to religious that away. But I just tell you, I'm reading the words Jesus spoke. So who am I going to believe? I, 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 believe we're, I believe we're about to see miraculous things happen. As long as we remain in that place of like, like in this moment of preparation for Yom Kippur, we remain, we remain in a place of denying ourself, which is a prerequisite for being a follower of Christ. Deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, and follow me. That's what the Word says. All right. This is really important. God will not invade your life beyond your choices and expectations. God will not invade your life. He's not going to throw miracles at you just to get your attention. God will not invade your life beyond your choices. There are people who do not see themselves as redeemed. There are people who do not see themselves as having a responsibility to be a follower of Jesus after they've 
confessed him as Lord of their lives and to do what he says next, even though it may not make sense because he's called us to do it. Walk by faith and not by sight. It meant absolutely no sense for me to leave an executive position in Houston, Texas and become pastor of a little church in Galveston County. Made no sense, but you know what? That was the pathway for me. I had been out of, uh, out of preaching ministry for years. I had been in several praise and worship groups. I was faithful in churches. I found myself with an opportunity to just go ahead and get a job where I can work and get, go ahead and get 20 years in and, or as much as I can toward that Walmart. And I, I was a week into it. And the Lord said, get out of here. This is where I called you. Where'd you call me? I want you to go out to Fort Davis and help your wife's ex-mother-in-law get rid of her house. There are times God will tell you to do things that make absolutely no sense in the natural. Do you know why? Because he's a supernatural God. He does things supernaturally. He does things in ways we can't even begin to imagine. This is what it says just a little bit above what we just read. However, Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 9, keep on asking and you'll receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you'll find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. Along the way, the master potter is going to be making some adjustments. There are going to be some changes in your thinking. There's going to be some changes in your heart. There are going to be maybe some changes in your physical activity. I don't know. But God is Lord. Jesus is Lord of your life. So we're asking him and so in order for us to be able to receive whatever good things he has for us, he has to make sure we're ready to receive it so that it blesses us to the max and he's able to get as much done through us as possible. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be open to you. We read this as the as we were beginning this, um, go ahead and come up, Rita. We're just about winding up here. You parents, if you your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So this is where we started out earlier. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask Him? And we tagged on to this. The, the programming that's out there is so massive. I, 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 bet I, I bet I have my focused attention on anything that's related to a television less than five minutes a week. Because there's nothing there. I mean, I can get some Christian programming on my computer if I want to, but there's nothing there. There's a lot of opinions, a lot of misdirection. A lot of the way the world thinks, and again, I, Cornerstone TV, a lot of other great TV networks that are out there, I'm not discounting those. But And if I do watch TV, it's one of those, or it's one of the movies from Pure Flix or something like that, because I want good stuff coming in. You know, I, I had, uh, <laughs> I still owe him for this, but uh, my, my uh, grandson had some Harry Potter videos. I threw them away. And uh, just because they're trash. And he, he, wanted to, he wanted to watch some more in my house. I said, no, we're not doing that. It's witchcraft. I'm not playing. And, and that's not playing around. We, we have access to the Holy Spirit, but I want to tell you, the devil's got some spirits. And he's out there. He's trying to do whatever he can to disrupt your life, to take everything that he can from you, to stop God from prospering you to stop God from protecting you, to stop God from giving you hope and a future. That's what the enemy's plan is. But I want to tell you what, God is greater than that. How can we possibly, well, I, I know this was only the beginning and, and I was one of those persistently rebellious um, Christians, but at the age of 12, uh, I went, like I said before, to a Billy Graham 
crusade in Phoenix, Arizona, and we were attending uh, First Brethren Church at the time. Dad, Dad tended to pick churches that were closest to the house. It was, it was. We had, we had such a diverse denominational background. He just wanted us to be in church, and uh, I remember answering that, and then, and then, um, I, my, my sister and I got baptized the same day, uh, and it was. I was just in awe, but then there's that whole thing that happens, you know, teenage years, you have all these other influences and, um, and, and, and I wandered away and then I, 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 I got back in and anchored myself in to St. Joe's Catholic church in Maslin. I just, that was my home, my place. But then I got into being in the seminary of form instead of the seminary of substance. I was there for confession. I was there for mass. I was there. However I could be there, I went on the retreats. But my heart was just like following the rhythm. Stand up, kneel, sit, stand up. And, and that's all it was. It was form. Now, there were times, there were times God slapped me. There were times he embraced me. There were times he just held me in his arms in, in St. Joe's. But it was me. <laughs> I, I had other plans. And then finally I got to this place where I recognized that I had just been in the seminary of form so long. I had a couple of young kids. And I said, I've got to get my kids in church because I have absolutely no no moral qualities. And uh, I was a little hard on myself, but that's how I felt. And I, I felt like they were going to learn some stuff from me that wasn't going to be good. They needed to learn the right stuff. And then God called me from there. But I want to go back to that first place. I didn't know what was going on. It was like going to a football, baseball, any kind of game. We were at a stadium, outdoors, people were singing. I don't know that I really listened to Reverend Graham, but I know this, there was an invitation, and then I started hearing, just as I am, and, and it was like the Spirit of God just grabbed my heart and, and pulled me down the stairs, out onto the field, and up in the front. And I have to believe, because I know that Brother Vincent is sharing the messages as much as he can. We're going to get some electronics to them. They want to archive all of our stuff so that they have that to show to the people around there. And they're asking us to pray for them for the next steps that will help them to be able to make disciples of these new converts and not let them fall back in to their ways. So keep them in prayer about that. But if you're listening to this, if you're one of these people that maybe you're listening here in the U.S. or maybe you're listening in Pakistan, Kenya, or India. We are, by nature, focused on self. We want things the way we want them. We want them easy. We want them fast. We want the most for us, and everybody else can live off the overflow. There's a different way. It's the way of Christ. It's the narrow way. It's the way that leads to everything that is good for you. But in order to that, we have to get to that place. We have to deal with the sin problem. Everybody's a sinner. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. Just because you've done good stuff, maybe you've been a church goer. Maybe you've been in the seminary of form and you go, you know, I, I don't know about this relationship thing you're talking about, but I do go to church. Well, this is for you. Jesus died for you personally. God loves you uniquely. Just as unique as you are, every one of those corners and crevices, Jesus loves you. 
uniquely, completely. And here's, here's the way in. The way in is to repent. The word in Greek is metanoia. It means to change your way of thinking, your way of heart, your way of spirit. And then, and then what's the next step? Believe in Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins, rose again from the dead, that he's alive, seated at the right hand of the Father. And it, and it goes kind of like this. And, and please make your conversation as personal as you want because it's a personal conversation that brings you into a personal relationship and at the same time, a corporate relationship with believers around the world. Lord, I know that sin that, that he's talking about. I've, I've, I've done things I know that are wrong. I've thought and said things to do harm. And, and I know that as I look at those Ten Commandments, much less to love the Lord your God or love your neighbor as yourself, I've missed it. And I'm sorry, I, I, I want to do this right because I believe you have purpose and a destiny and a life for me that goes all the way from here under your favor and your blessing all the way into eternity in your presence forever. The only way I can find that path is in you because you are the way. Come in today. Be my Savior. Lord, help me to get to that place of deny myself, to pick up my cross. Maybe I don't even know what it's shaped like yet, but my purpose and destiny to be your witness, to be your disciple maker in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. Lord, give me the wisdom, the preparation, the courage, the favor to do this. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by your spirit. Lord, I want to do that. I want to be the man, the woman that you've called me to be. Lord, I want to be the man you've called me to be. The ladies want to be the woman you've called them to be. That's the way it is. Lord, we want to be who you've called us to be so that we can serve your purpose. And by doing that, those things that are near and dear to our heart that we ask for, you promise that we'll receive. What an awesome promise. And one of those promises is that we're healed by the stripes of Jesus. So I pray right now for any who are listening, for any sickness, certainly for, for Jerry's eyes and his, and his kidneys for these upcoming visits and over their travel. Over Tracy and I, as we travel to and from Phoenix, Father God, we we just again speak against all of this, all of the attacks on minds, the 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 attack that try to create fear in people's minds, like this whole nuclear thing. Lord, I, I just pray in the name of Jesus, right now for healing, whatever part of your body that may be. I have every just a, every time I've taken something to the Lord, I've put my hand on whatever part that body part that is, he heals me. And it's stronger and better than ever before. So in Jesus' name, just put your hand right there. I believe that the healing, I feel that, the healing anointing. Somebody has chest problem. Um, don't know that it's in here, but somebody has a chest problem. That's healed in Jesus' name. There's a another, not, I don't believe this person's in this room, but there's another person that has coronary artery, artery disease. And God's, God's flushing that right now. He's cleaning out those arteries. He's, he's creating healing. You've got a valve. Heart murmur, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, that valve, those calcifications around that valve are healed and gone. And Father, it's functioning as if it was brand new. Hallelujah. Lord, for those who are believing for miracles, for work, Lord, I lift up Sister Mary over in Kenya, who has just gone through this terrible time of her dad being in the hospital. Father, she's she's wanting to get into school this year, I pray that you provide the way for her. 
to do that. Father, that you would be with all of those who aren't here today, our, our other church family, and those who are our loved ones. Help us to be witnesses to them. Father, I pray for those who are believing for a miracle, whether it's a job, financial miracle, miracle in marriage and family, just standing with you in, in faith right now, believing for that. Lord, we lift all of these things to you with thanksgiving and praise because you are the God who never fails. In Jesus' name, amen. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living.